G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness giving you a Warhammer 40k introduction because, uh, yep, this is happening. So, um, I'm just about to post my first ever 40k battle report and I know that I'd spoken about this in, um, in one of my previous channel updates and uh, majority of people have been very supportive and uh, majority of people probably played more than one gaming systems and were, were quite happy to see these reports or the vocal uh, majority were anyway I know there were a few people a few of you that said you know Warhammer 8th edition only um, but I do know that uh, and I think you're all aware as well that with the release of Age of Sigma the splintering of the community and um, you know people have just gone everywhere but on the positive it really has opened up a lot of us to exploring new game systems um, with the uncertainty building up to the release of Age of Sigma um, I wasn't collecting any fantasy models so I decided I was going to uh, fulfill that side of my hobby by collecting a 40k army and um, and now I've done it so I've only ever had um, two games in the past and I've had three games now um, so I'm a massive noob and uh, this is the, the purpose of this introduction is also a disclaimer to say you know this is just my hobby guys and this is just my progression um, I'm a, a massive noob at everything and uh, at Age of Sigma at this and um, uh, I'm only just learning so if you're an experienced 40k player out there um, please help me <laughs> um, you know when you see me play rules wrong and so forth let me know um, if you think there are tactics that I'm missing or tactics that you have that you could help me please let me know as well and uh, hopefully uh, the more experienced of you can help me grow into a better 40k player and perhaps the um, people that don't play 40k at the moment um, might take the time to to watch a report and decide that with all the uh, shenanigans going on with Age of Sigma and so forth they might like to give it a crack as well now Age of Sigma is going to be the dominant game on this channel um, the Warhammer 40k reports will probably be um, I don't know maybe maybe once every two or three weeks uh, there's not going to be a massive amount of them because when I do get to play a game I'm probably going to be trying to play Age of Sigma, but um, I, I don't mind throwing in 40k to, to break up the uh, the games and of course if anyone ever wants a game of Warhammer 8th edition um, I'm more than happy to have a game as well. So you're going to see all three uh, games on the channel from here on in, but um, predominantly they probably will be Age of Sigma and that's just because that's what people around here uh, seemingly want to play so this is just to introduce my army and my tactics and my thoughts and uh, chapter and all that sort of stuff and then I'll put up the report and uh, we'll take it from there so um, I actually found building the army was well all, all I did is I really thought well I'm, uh, I'm new to this hobby I don't want to take it too seriously so I probably just want to make an army out of the models that I like the most and um, I've got a soft spot for dreadnoughts I think dreadnoughts are just freaking awesome um, so I thought right how many dreadnoughts can I get and also they're, they're quite cheap you know people sell dreadnoughts second hand um, left right and center from the you know because they're often in the starter kits and so forth and I think they're probably only fairly mediocre I understand they just got a bit of a buff but from what I've read most people say they're a pretty average sort of unit so I figured hey here's a way that I could probably build an army uh, on the cheap with the models that I just love the most and um, I'm going to try and jam as many dreadnoughts in here as I can so I built a, an army like 1500 points or so with um, I think it was three dreadnoughts or, or something like that um, and then I found out and then I had to choose what chapter I was going to take. Now this was the hardest thing about building a Space Marine army was really deciding what paint scheme you want. You know, that, I mean, that as simple as it is, I, I looked at the chapter tactics and I looked at the paint scheme. I didn't want to do Ultramarines because I felt like everyone does Ultramarines. You know, they're the Blue Smurf, they're the Poster Boys, the 40K. Um, and all the other paint schemes that I liked 
were successor chapters of um, Ultramarine. So I was like, ah, uh, or White Scars. And I don't think, you know, I'm such a noob. I can't play with White Scars chapter tactics at the moment because I'm, I'm just not good enough to um, for that level of gameplay yet, I think. Um, so I was sort of looking around and, and, and these, you know, the the Iron Hands were sort of the only other guys that um, I sort of liked, but then I read some of their fluff and it was okay, but I, I wasn't super set on it. Um, anyways, went down to my local store, started talking to the, the store manager there, and then he told me about, I kept asking him, is there a way that I can take, because in my Battle Scribe, um, there was a way that I can take Dreadnoughts as my heavy support and my elite so I can actually build an army of more of them and I thought that's got to be in there for a reason so I kept asking him is there is there a way that I can take more as my heavy support heavy support and then he decided and then he found the uh, clan Arukan uh, supplement and and the clan Rukan is a um, a clan it's the third company of the Iron Hands um, legion or chapter and uh, they basically specialize in dreadnoughts and just um, allow you to take a ton of them. So we had a quick read through that book. We had a look at what I would need for the minimum requirements to run at Clan Rukan. And uh, that was it. I was sold. Iron Hands it is. And uh, dreadnoughts, here we go. So um, this is the, the sort of paint skin. And this was another thing as well. Originally I was thinking um, Imperial Fist, but painting yellow is very hard. And, uh, and it just seemed like every player that I, after I decided I wanted to go Imperial Fist, every player I spoke to or I saw that was playing Space Marines was playing Imperial Fist. I was like, what the hell? So um, I don't want to do that. And, uh, and uh, this black and silver paint scheme is something that I can certainly paint myself. However, I think it's so basic that uh, it's actually quite hard to do you know because you can just do black and silver and some red and yellow dots but that kind of looks boring so to do it well I think to do it well is, is beyond me but um, I can do it to a tabletop standard anyway so that made it easier the only other thing I'm, I'm a bit upset about is that I think on the transfer sheets sheets that come with the models when you buy them the iron hands are the only transfer sheets that uh, aren't included like the only icons that aren't included everything else is there but there's no iron hand so i'm gonna have to buy them from forge uh, forge world and uh, they're like 18 pounds so um i will get there in the next few weeks and get them and put them on but at the moment my stuff is unmarked unfortunately um so chapter tactics the the iron hands have got uh, this flesh is weak which is pretty good so all of your um or all your non-vehicles um, get a feel no pain six up and if you're new to 40k like me uh, and you need to translate it across to um, fantasy or something six up uh, feel no pain is basically a six up ward save so getting a sort of free six up ward save across the um, across your whole army is uh, pretty awesome I think well you know you, you won't say no to it but this is the main thing it's called machine empathy and it's um, uh, Iron Hands characters and vehicles have the it will not die special rule. So what that does is that at the end of my turn, uh, for each one of my vehicles, I roll a d6 and on a 5 up, I think I get a wound back and I heal, like if I'm damaged or immobilized or something, that heals up as well. So when I've just got mass dreadnoughts walking around um, for the ability to heal them up at the end of the game, that is absolutely fantastic. Now it says here as well, tech marines add one to their blessings of the Omasar rolls. What that means is I get plus one to my repair. So I think tech marines do it normally on a five up and then this makes it a four up. Um, I'm not sure, someone who, who's more experienced than me probably needs to help me out here. Um, so I think tech marines do it on a five up and then you give them the servo harness which makes it on a four up and then this blessing of the almost oh, this uh, iron hands chapter tactic would make them repair in a three up is that right um leave me a comment if you know but either way that all sort of synergizes quite well i think with um uh you know with my army my army plan and then i've also got a uh, well i'll go into that next so here is my army uh, you can see my son's toys are in the corner and this these are my toys at the moment so um, I actually don't really like 
space marines much like as just space marines um well i don't mind them but I, I i don't love them and i wanted to try and fit in as many dreadnoughts as possible and that meant probably skimping on my troops a bit so at the moment i've got a unit of 10 snipers with a, a missile launcher they're just going to camp in the back in some cover somewhere and uh, pew pew i've got a unit of five scouts now i've only got them in there because i really i just because i need two troop choices um i know you can play unbound in this but i think in my sort of area and community um most people don't play unbound so i don't want to you know be brand new saying hey let's play unbound and they're like you know piss off you noob um so i've got a unit of five scouts in there they've just got a heavy bolter and um i mean i could run the two uh, five-man scout units to, to you know, with sniper rifles to cut it down, but um, I think this is okay. The five-man bolter, bolter scouts can be flexible and go after objectives and so forth, while the um, scout snipers can try and do some damage. The um, assault marines, they're just vanilla. I'm just running the vanilla at the moment, so they've got a, a, a sergeant, but uh, there's no special weapons or power fists or anything like that in there and then i've got three devastator centurions so the devastator centurions have got the uh, uh i've given them the grav weapons grav amps and hurricane bolters um i watched a few uh mini wargaming battle reports when i was sort of planning this army and um every report i saw these guys sort of just walked around blasting everything so um yeah, I thought I'd better add some in. They seem they seem like a bit of an auto include, um, and I actually don't mind the model so much. I was reading on on um, you know some blogs and that sort of stuff, and they they seem to get quite a bit of shit for being Space Marines inside other Space Marine suits, which I can understand that joke, but um, uh, I don't think they look too bad, and uh, and that's all right. Then I've got my librarian off to the side now. That's the new librarian model. He's uh, in Terminator armor. So everything, I designed my army to be WYSIWYG as well. So everything you see, what is it? What you see is what you get. So everything that's equipped on my guys is actually as it's equipped. Um, so I've got a li uh, librarian. He's a, I normally run him as level two. He's got the uh, four staff. He's got a combi melter and he's in Terminator armor. Now, there's a um, clan relic or a clan item I can give him from the clan Rukan supplement. I think it's called the Einstone, and I'm pretty sure it gives um, all vehicles within six inches of me um, plus one to their it will not die roll. So my my dreads, if he's close to him, should um, repair on a four up instead of a five up, and I think that's massive. Now I do have a uh, tech marine as well, which I don't have in this picture. I'm, I'm I'm in the process of painting them up at the moment, but I have to take a tech marine as a part of the the clan Rukan, and I don't mind either um, because I think they're pretty handy. So then we've got uh, on top of the drop pod, I've got my ironclad dreadnought, and I just gave him double heavy flamer. Um, people were sort of talking about all sorts of builds, and I just thought I'll build him how I, how I want and. Um, and I like the idea of dropping down and uh, burning shit and then charging in and wrecking face. So um, I've kitted him out as well. He's got double hunter killers. And uh, and to be honest with you, he's sort of my pride and joy. He's he's a bit of my lead dread. And um, uh, I don't mind him being probably more expensive than what, you know, he, he, uh, he, can, he can do because he's... Um, yeah, I just like him. I've got a soft spot for him. So that's his drop pod under there. I gave it the missile launcher. I've never seen people really take the missile launcher, but I just thought, heck, why not? You know, if I'm going to drop pot him down and he's meant to, to pop out and uh, hurt stuff, may as well give him a bit of support as well. So then in the middle, I've got three venerable dreadnoughts. So um, the dreadnoughts you can upgrade, uh, and it gives them plus one weapon skill, plus one ballistic skill. So they go to a weapon skill, ballistic skill five, which is awesome. Um, and they also get a special ability to re-roll. Basically, if you penetrate them, you roll a d6, and then depending on what you get, it has certain results. So it like shakes them, immobilizes them, or just makes them blow up so they can just die straight away. Um, the Venerable Dreadnoughts have an ability to make you re-roll that, but I have to accept the second roll. So I think that's pretty important because if you hit me and you roll a, a six and make me explode, I can get you to re-roll it, and odds are um, I'm gonna save my life. So they're pretty awesome. I've equipped them out um, as a bit of a 
a semi-gun line, you know. So I've got twin link las cannons. Um, las cannons are like a, an anti-tank weapon, and then I've got the twin linked, uh, the dual twin link auto cannons as well, which are something in between. You know, they can really hurt pretty much anything in the game, um, probably except for the like the heaviest of vehicles. But if you're like a big monster or your infantry or uh, a light vehicle, or whatever, they can hurt you. Um, so I can put out some 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 fairly good penetrating firepower out of this unit and I've still got uh, two flamers on, on, on the unit as well on the power fist so I can still walk across the table, I can get into combat, I can assault um, and I can also do an anti-vehicle um, you know sort of roll one there and they're in a unit as, as three then off on the, the right hand side I've got two dreads um, they're just solo dreads so they're just basic uh, pretty much vanilla dreads um, running them by themselves and they've just got the assault cannon and uh, one's got a storm bolter one's got a heavy flamer um, I sort of bought them second hand so uh, I mean the 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 arms are replaceable I've got all the other weapons here so I can swap them in and out as I want but the power fist I like running them with that power fist and um, uh, one of them had the storm bolter already attached to it so stuff it I don't mind running them with that and they're just really there to be versatile they're there to roam singly um, react where they want if they need to run over to old ironclad and support him and uh, assault with him then they can um, if they need to just uh, work together and shoot out infantry they can do that um, and they can just you know perform that sort of role so I've got my venerables to take out vehicles uh, two lone dreadnoughts and my ironclad to take out infantry and, and sort of weaker stuff and then the centurions just uh, uh, <laughs> the centurions just kill everything um, but I've got a bit of a, a, a battle plan how I want to play these guys um, I've played like I said I've played two guys in the two games in the past and one of the games I used this this strategy and it worked quite well um, and I'm sure some of you 40k guys are just laughing at the moment thinking this guy's got no freaking idea um, but hey we're just having fun so uh, let's see so this is basically my battle deployment idea and my basic tactic that I'll be trying to use in most games and um, uh, I won't take too long talking about it because it's really not that fantastic it's pretty newbie but um, whatever so this is roughly what my deployment would, would look like um, my centurions can be pretty flexible they I can drop them down wherever I need them to be really but uh, unit of, of scouts will camp in the back somewhere and, and you know shoot stuff uh, not very complicated five man unit of scouts I can uh, I can put wherever I need to they'll steal objectives or um, just run around and pew pew but really I think they're just going to die um, but the main thing is this blob you can see in the middle so I want to run my, my three venerable dreadnoughts at the front as uh, providing cover for the guys behind. So as the venerables move up the shooting, um, focusing their fire on vehicles, my assault marines with my librarian and my tech priest will be moving up directly behind them. So by staying in directly behind them, I'm giving a cover save to my assault marines. I'm keeping my librarian with my ironstone within six inches of them so they're going to get it will not die on a four up and then my, my tech priest is going to be in that unit as well so he can heal them if they take any damage so that's sort of the plan and also the bodies of the assault marines are there just as a bit of a bunker and to absorb some fire if they get shot at so that my, my HQ and my heroes don't get shot um, the two dreadnoughts will sort of go either flank and like I said they're just going to be flexible um, they're going to shoot at uh, whatever they, they can and they're going to you know just go where they need to go and support when they need to so support they've sort of just got assault cannons um, so I've sort of just pinned them down to be sort of anti-infantry or um, uh, you know anti like heavy infantry but they've still got the power fist so I can still charge them into a vehicle if I need to and um, and pop it with a, a big punch um, and then obviously my dreadnought as well so my, my, my ironclad will come down turn one hopefully get some attention hopefully get tied up in a big unit and just smashing stuff um, while my other crap walks across the board now once I get to a point where I need to assault with my dreads or my um, assault marines I'm going to move my librarian and move my tech priest out of the assault marines so move them out of the unit and then I can um, assault 
one unit with the dreads and then I can jump pack my assault marines over the top of them into another unit or both into the same unit whatever but um, it just gives me that sort of or if there's a big nasty unit coming in at them that's going to wreck my dreads I can sort of assault uh, jump my marines over the top into them and ho hopefully tie them up until I can work something else out so that's sort of my plan I think it gives me a, a good basic to, uh, basis to sort of start on um, I can use the assault marines as sort of chaff and redirectors or to just to take out something that's on the way um, that I don't want to, you know, redirect my dreadnoughts off into. So dreadnoughts can march towards the target, assault marines can peel off and deal with whatever they need to. Um, yeah, and, and, and I think it's going to work pretty well. I ran this the, the second game I played in this sort of style and um, it worked quite good. And then I've got the next game coming up uh, well the, my first ever report I'm going to do um, that I'm about to post and in that it worked quite well as well so um, let me know what you think of the army guys of the the thought of the the strategy all that sort of stuff um, I'm trying to stay themed and pretty thematic so I'm probably not going to drop dreadnoughts to add other stuff but I am am likely to drop other stuff to add dreadnoughts um, or other walkers so this is 1750 points I'm trying to build it up to 2000 points um, and 2000 points is really just another ironclad and two more drop pods um, but let me know what you think and, and let me know uh, you know what the best sort of what you like to do with your, your guys and so forth and um, uh, I'll put it into practice and uh, see how we go so uh, look I hope hope you enjoy the 40k content like I said there's not going to be a massive amount um, but uh, it is going to pop up so uh, ooh, fingers crossed you enjoy it thanks guys